Good afternoon. We're bringing you breaking news this afternoon in what could be a major moment in the making in Texas political history. I'm Brian Mays here with senior investigative reporter Tony Polohetsky. We're reporting live from the KVU studio this afternoon with that breaking news. And Tony, you've confirmed that a deal is in the works to bring to a close the nine-year-old felony case against Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. A long-running case, Brian, that has really dogged Ken Paxton's time in office. And I want to stress that this is a tentative resolution to those state security fraud cases against the AG. But this is the first signal that this case could soon be resolved. What we've learned from three sources familiar with the negotiations is that the special prosecutor and attorneys for Ken Paxton have a draft agreement in place. Under that agreement, the felony state securities fraud charges against Kim Paxton would eventually be dismissed. In exchange, as the deal in its current form states, Paxton would complete community service, take advanced legal education classes, and be required to pay a six-figure restitution. What he would not have to do is accept any legal responsibility. And Brian, this is significant because it would allow Kim Paxton to avoid, of course, what could be a lengthy the trial that trial set right now at least for April 15th in Houston and it would allow him to keep his law license keep in mind the penalty if this case were to go to trial and Paxton would be convicted is 99 years in prison Brian these were serious charges and as you mentioned have been around for many years he's had this kind of hanging over his head uh, this case was really the first of many allegations Ken Paxton faced they dated back to even before he took office in 2015 of course there was the historic impeachment last fall which Paxton faced allegations he abused his office to help a well-known Austinite investor Nate Paul state senators did not convict him of those charges and Paxton who'd been suspended returned to work as the state's top attorney. Paxton still facing an ongoing federal investigation arising from those same allegations. Tony, in terms of this tentative deal on the securities fraud charges, what is the timing as you understand it? So keep in mind, just to rewind the tape a little bit, mm -hmm. Brian, going back to this past Wednesday, there was a final, what was supposed to be a final pre-trial hearing in court in Houston and State District Court. That hearing was moved until this coming Tuesday, net Tuesday of next week. And what we are anticipating is that this will finally conclude that day that there will be an announcement potentially in open court in front of the judge that this case is being resolved and that there is no need for the court to go forward with that April 15th trial date. Again, the court blocking off several weeks for what was expected to be a quite lengthy trial. One of the prosecutors in this case, uh, Kent Schaefer, recently left the case because from all reports, he was trying to get this exact thing to have happen. Uh, the attorney generals had to try to get these, these charges resolved or thrown out over the past. Why now? What is the timing now that made this the day that this, well, this week that this is happening? Well, certainly look, looking down the barrel of a trial would make a prosecutor potentially review their case and actually determine just how strong the evidence is. Prosecutors will tell you that these types of agreements they sometimes enter into when, frankly, they don't feel like they can obtain a conviction in this case. But in the coming days, Brian, I expect there will be a lot of conversation in the legal community and obviously the political community about whether or not this is an appropriate resolution to this case. And if so, why this uh, was not something that was brought forward Years ago, keep in mind that this case has been subject to fights about prosecutor pay, the pay of those two special prosecutors, and in addition to that, jurisdiction, where, where the case would be heard, whether it would be heard where the charges originated, that is Kim Paxton's home county, Collin County. Ultimately, it was decided that the case would be moved to Harris County, to Houston, and then we've seen a number of legal maneuvers by Ken Paxton and his legal team that prosecutors have said were designed to prolong the case and in terms of prolonging the case potentially according to prosecutors trying to weaken the case. How common is something like this to happen in a case with charges that are this serious? 
We do see prosecutors, particularly in urban counties across the state, enter into these types of agreements. They're called a number of different names. They're sometimes called conditional dismissals or deferred prosecution agreements. Sometimes they're called diversion agreements. Uh, not entirely uncommon, particularly when we are talking about a defendant who has no prior criminal history and in nonviolent cases. But that is something that we are continuing to try to unpack and analyze just how often or not these types of agreements occur across our state. And again, to stress, this is the security fraud charges, not the whistleblower lawsuit, which is totally separate from this. Keep in mind that this, the allegations that can against Ken Paxton really originated with these state security fraud charges. Subsequent to that, over the past decade basically now, he has been the subject of allegations from those whistleblowers that resulted in that lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Tentative settlement never has been settled. And again, just to underscore that there is an ongoing federal investigation but the allegations, the underlying allegations involving the federal investigation and that whistleblower lawsuit, Brian, are separate and apart from this matter that we are talking about today. All right, senior reporter Tony Plaheski with the very latest on the Ken Paxton security fraud charges. We'll, of course, have much more on this tonight on KVU News at 5 and 6. Tony, thank you for joining us here. Thank you we'll so much. We'll return you to your regularly scheduled programming.